Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Hybrid Rasta Mama here and today I'm talking to you about 12 ways to prevent mold. Mold prevention is obviously the first step in not ever having to go through a huge toxic mold event and I'm very very diligent now about uh, essentially doing monthly inspections around my home to make sure that um, I'm doing everything that I can to be diligent in preventing any mold growth. Um, so today, let's chat a little bit about ways that you can prevent mold. These are all very easy and a lot of these kind of maintenance type of things um, just you know you just need to get them on a regular schedule so you make sure you do them and some of these can even just be done in passing on uh, just kind of an everyday basis so first um, I think this goes without saying but uh, one of the ways to prevent mold is of course I'm sorry I have the wind blowing and I'm eating my hair. Um, the, one, the first way would be to always clean up standing water and moisture. And I think you'd be surprised at how many people don't actually do this. Um, molds only need about 24 hours of a moist environment in order to begin growing. And so if you have even a minor amount of water, like um, some water that doesn't dry up in your window because of condensation, which that's a whole other problem, uh, or leaving a shower damp. Um, mold can grow there very, very quickly and very easily. So of course, there's you know a major event like a, a broken pipe or a flood, and that has to be dealt with differently. But standing water includes just about everything. So wiping showers down, if your dog spills water, wiping that up your child spills something. Um, if you have carpet, um, always making sure that you're cleaning up the spill and then putting a fan on it to dry it out. Um, so anytime there's any sort of standing water or moisture, making sure that you're dealing with it promptly and that you're, of course, also just checking for leaks and whatnot um, throughout your home on a regular basis. So the next, um, the next step to prevent mold is always being diligent about ventilation. And this is where the condensation comes in. Mold absolutely loves condensation. Um, and condensation only forms when there is improper ventilation. And uh, you know, when a bathroom mirror fogs up, maybe you didn't open a window or maybe you don't have a window to open, maybe you don't have the ventilation fan, uh, but you'll get, you'll get the, uh, the condensation on the mirrors and on your walls and on your floor when there's not proper ventilation. Um, even, though we have a con even though we have a ventilation fan and a window in our hall bathroom, that bathroom for some reason just you barely have the hot water on and it really really wants to get a lot of condensation. So if you do have an area where a lot of condensation occurs, you want to make sure that you dry that whole area off after use. And uh, I even take it a step further and I have a special spray that I'll link to in the comments and I always spray everything down with that afterwards just in case. Um, I like to just make sure that I'm covering all my bases. Uh, you also want to keep your humidity levels in check. Um, indoor humidity is uh, it, typically between 30 and 60 percent for most house. Um, lower is even better but uh, it kind of depends on where you live. So obviously if you're in the south and it's very humid during the summer, it's harder to keep those levels low. That's what dehumidifiers can be for. Uh, I always suggest having a dehumidifier running if you live in a very humid area. Um, you also always want to uh, have something on hand to measure humidity with, whether that's a humidity monitor, monitor <laughs> that uh, attaches to your wall or something really simple like a moisture meter. Um, which can detect obviously not only moisture in the wall, but uh, it can also detect humidity. Um, and again, paying attention to your condensation levels will also give you a clue if uh, you know if there's something different happening in one portion of your house. Um, also, for basements, always make sure that if your basement is flood prone, um, that you install a sump pump. Uh, you absolutely have to have one of those. Also, uh, another way to prevent mold is simply to improve the airflow in your home. 
uh, you want to move furniture away from walls, open doors and windows, open closet doors from time to time. Um, fresh air helps reduce moisture and uh, also keep the mold at bay. So really do everything you can to improve the airflow in your home. Closed up rooms, closed up closets, things like that. Uh, they can get issues and maybe you're unaware because you don't go in that closet very often. We actually had a leak in our water heater closet, not because of our water heater, it was actually a pipe broke in the ceiling and I don't often go in there and my daughter happened to be playing hide and go seek with a friend. They opened it up and said, oh my gosh mom, there's water everywhere and luckily it had like just happened. The pipe had just burst probably a couple hours before. Obviously we would eventually see that water coming out later in the day because it was coming out quite a bit. But um, you know, areas that you don't go into as much and that stay closed up, do try to air them out from time to time. Um, a good airing out is good. Uh, the next thing that you can do to prevent mold is proper air filtration. Um, I have air purifiers in every room of my house and uh, sometimes it drives people nuts because they're like my gosh I mean how many air purifiers do you need but uh, I don't think you can over purify air I have actually done a lot of research on that and you cannot over purify air and uh, air purifiers don't compete with each other so uh, I are on the side of caution and I have one in every room I have traditional air purifiers along with uh, things like uh, crystal salt lamps and a few other kind of fun gadgets and uh, I keep those running all the time. So if a mold event were to happen then hopefully those air filters are catching as much of that as possible um, and, uh, and mitigating any health effects that I might have until of course I deal with it properly. So always make sure that you invest in, um, in proper air filtration devices. Uh, you don't have to get as extreme as me. <laughs> uh, the sixth way to prevent mold is to insulate your ducts. So the ducts obviously are what carry the heat and the air through your house and uh, they must be insulated because basically what happens is when you have um, I have a unheated or an uncooled space so like an attic for example in Arizona the attics here in Arizona can get 160 degrees or more during um, regular temperatures here in the summer which you know would be in the hundreds but when we hit 120 122 degrees those attics can get it's just I've heard people say they can get up to 200 degrees um, so basically what happens is when um, when you have an uncooled space like that and not a lot of circulation then boom you get a little bit of water up there mold for days and it molds very very quickly in an attic same thing with the basement only it's the reverse it's usually an unheated space because basements tend to stay very cool and damp so uh, it's very important to insulate your duct work um, and uh, and basically that's why or that's because you don't want the condensation to form inside the ducts that's not going to help with the actual attic or basement not getting mold it's simply so the mold does not start to grow inside your duct work um, I mentioned this before but checking for signs and staying vigilant for water intrusions and this this is I mean everything from checking your baseboards to make sure there's not water coming under to checking your ceilings. Um, I have marked where essentially in our our pipes, our water pipes run through our attic. So every place I know there is a connection, I've made a little mark and I take my moisture meter once a month and I check and make sure that those aren't leaking. And this is actually something that I really should have been doing more often. Um, if I had, <laughs> I probably would have caught a major leak that happened when a connection burst between our two bathrooms and uh, we were we spent about a month in a hotel because of that fiasco. So, um, you know, using a moisture meter to check areas where you know you have water flow, connections with pipes, um, like, you know, basically behind um, washer and dryer where the pipes are, your sinks, things like that. So always look on your paint for odd discoloration, um, 
Uh, again, looking for the condensation that's not normally there. Uh, looking in your window sills for mold growth and things like that. So just really checking your house top to bottom once a month. Uh, it doesn't take me very long. I mean, I know what I'm looking for and I know where I'm looking for it. So um, always just checking to make sure nothing has changed. Um, another great way to prevent mold is simply avoiding carpet. Mold spores love carpet. Very hard to get them out. Even if you have a HEPA vacuum, which is recommended for, you know, carpet or not carpet. Um, oh my gosh, there's a huge spider walking towards me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter if you have tile or, or carpet, always have a HEPA vacuum. But you definitely want to try to avoid carpet as much as possible. And in addition to it, just holding on to mold spores, if it gets wet, and the carpet pad gets wet, and especially if you have a wood floor, um, a, a wood foundation as opposed to a concrete foundation. Um, oh my gosh, I mean, you talk about a mold haven. So, um, you know, any sort of moisture in carpet, and it's so hard not to spill stuff. <laughs> it happens, especially if you have kids or you have animals coming in. Um, carpet is really just a huge no-no for mold prevention and mold avoidance. Um, also, another way to prevent mold is simply to maintain your fridge and your freezer. So perform your routine maintenance. Make sure if you have water filters in the, uh, the refrigerator, ice maker, water maker, you're checking the water lines, you're making sure that the filter is installed properly. If the filter is not installed properly, and a lot of people don't know this, um, it can actually create air in the line and then the line can blow and even if you are still getting water through, it could come disconnected just enough that you're gonna have a small leak and it drips behind the refrigerator, goes under the baseboards and your walls and boom, there you go. So checking to make sure that everything is operational in terms of your refrigerator and your freezer. Um, you also might wanna consider not having indoor plants. And I know that indoor plants can have a ton of benefits, but think about their soil. Uh, you have to keep them watered, so you're creating a moist environment and soil itself has mold spores. So I, I used to have tons and tons and tons of indoor plants and every so often I would find some funky fungus growing and uh, and I would use these special natural anti-fungicide stuffs, but you know in hindsight I realized having indoor plants is probably not the smartest thing for me health-wise, um, especially when I am trying to prevent mold. Now the spider is about ready to crawl across the camera. <laughs> oh, this little tricky guy here. Hang on. Mm. I don't have a problem with spiders, but I have a problem with big Arizona spiders. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the 11th way to prevent mold is eliminating clutter. And there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, first, clutter hides and, and just traps dust. Dust has mold spores. So the more clutter you have, the harder it is to get rid of the dust, the more things there just are to dust. And so you have the likelihood of mold spores floating around just waiting for the right to, oh my gosh, the spider jumped like far. <laughs> Sorry, it's not supposed to be a spider video. Um, anyway, so the, um, the dust itself will hold on to those mold spores and then when the appropriate food comes along, like a water intrusion, the mold spores have something to latch on to. Um, also, clutter in general blocks the airflow of your living space. And remember, again, airflow is very important. So if you have a lot of clutter, you're blocking proper airflow and ventilation through your home, which can, of course, cause all kinds of problems. Um, also, uh, your home has what's called microclimates, and that really relates to how much stuff is in a specific area. So if you have an area of your home with a lot of stuff, you're gonna have uh, kind of what you would want to call a stuffy microclimate, which is ideal for mold growth. Um, that's why, you know, Closets oftentimes grow mold before other parts of a house because they're usually packed full of stuff and closed up. Um, 
So basically, the fewer things you have that act as dust collectors, the better. Um, if you do want to have items displayed, a nice glass display case is safer than just having them out and about. Um, and as much as possible, keep things in cabinets behind closed doors as it has less of a chance of collecting dust that way, but also making sure that you're checking in those cabinets. Um, so the 12th way to prevent mold is sort of a whole laundry list, but these are just some other things to keep in mind. Um, always be aware of your surroundings in your home. Um, is it at the bottom of a hill where a water uh, runoff is going to flow towards your home? Or are you at the top of a hill where you're dumping water down on other people? Uh, so if you're at the bottom of an area with water flow, then you do need to do what you uh, need to do in order to not have that water building up in your yard or around your home. Um, always make sure all your pipes are in good working condition. Um, also keep all of your roof and your gutters well maintained and cleared. You don't want to have all your gutters clogged up and then the water has to dump over the side as opposed to going down the drains. Um, always make sure your drain is draining somewhere proper and not into your house. Never aim your sprinklers at your house. <laughs> That's a horrible idea. Um, and uh, something we had to do is improve the grading outside and the drainage by keeping the soil from sloping towards our home. Um, we actually, when, when we moved into this house, didn't realize that the water was flowing into this one particular room. And when we did uh, finally figure out that we had you know, a moist wall and, um, and talked to our landlord and he had somebody come out and it turns out that the property was actually graded down into the house. So it was a big production of tearing up the whole front yard and redoing it so it sloped away from the house. But it's very, very important to do that um, because I don't care what kind of foundation you have and how tightly you feel your house is sealed up. If the water is flowing towards your home, it will find a way in. Um, also cover dirt crawl space floors with plastic to reduce the, the moisture. Um, that's, I don't love using plastic and I don't try to recommend using it, but in this case you definitely, for a dirt crawl space, want to put some plastic down. Um, you also want to keep storage at least several inches up off concrete floors and away from uh, wood foundations where dampness can seep in. So like for a garage, a lot of people just pile their stuff up on the floor. It would be better to have a storage rack with airflow underneath, not actually a storage rack that touches the floor, but those wire racks where you can have some airflow, and then use those to stack your, your items on. Um, this is especially important for any sort of packaging storage materials like a cardboard box um, or a, a wooden trunk or something like that. You don't want to have that just sitting on the ground. You definitely want to have that elevated. And if possible, you again, I don't like to use plastic, but for storage, um, that's kind of the ideal substrate to use. Um, when choosing building materials, use materials that don't feed the mold. That's a whole post into itself, but um, it's very important to be diligent about the building materials that you're using. And um, and don't let wet towels pile up. I see so many people just, sorry, there's some construction going on. Hang 10. I'm sure these guys have been entertained with all my video recording this morning. Probably like, who's this crazy chick? Hang on, sorry, 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 stay with me. Or fast forward in a second. <laughs> Come on. Longest commercial break ever, right? Okay, so um, don't let wet towels pile up. I mean, I see a lot of people throw them down onto the floor, throw them into laundry baskets wet, and then they don't do their laundry for three or four days. Look, that is the best way. Sorry. Just trying to record a video, darn it. Um, anyway, wet towels are the best way for mold to start growing. So uh, I always hang them outside in between washings to dry. 
this is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm really sorry. All right, um, and the same can be said for clothing. Do not let damp clothing sit around. Same philosophy. Uh, hang it up so it can dry. Um, also dry laundry immediately after washing. Don't line dry inside your home. Take it outside or in the garage. The only exception might be if, uh, if you have a fireplace and wanna dry something right in front of the fireplace but otherwise it takes too long to dry in the home and that's just inviting moisture in. Um, also, you always wanna dry the inside of your washing machine after use. So mold growth is not encouraged and this is especially true if you have the front loading washing machine. Um, I also spray a special mold solution, which I'll, I'll link to um, inside the washing machine after I've used it for the day. Um, so anyway, that's about it. That is. 12 plus ways to prevent mold. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Otherwise, uh, feel free to hop over to my blog. I put the link to this blog post there in the comments for you, and uh, you can check out a uh, little uh, extra information beyond what I've talked about today. All right, have a good one.